What would cause a plane to just fall out of the sky hours into the flight? ABC's John Berman has a look at some possible scenarios. It's a terrifying sight. Lightning strikes an aircraft in the sky. Scary? Yes. But deadly? Usually not. Lightning strikes are something that actually are fairly commonplace. Uh, the aircraft are designed, grounded in such a way that the uh, lightning strike tends to flow around the skin of the aircraft. And that assistance off. NASA ran tests in the 70s to help planes withstand the impact. Oh, good one. Now a commercial airplane gets hit by lightning an average of once a year, often leaving little more than a tiny dent. How then does a plane just disappear from the map four full hours after takeoff? Truth is, it almost never happens. A mere 6% of air accidents happen when the plane is cruising in mid-flight, like Air France 447. More than 94% of crashes happen during takeoff and landing, when there are complicated procedures going on. When it has happened, there's a reason. In 1998, a Swiss air flight crashed off the coast of Canada, killing 229. A small fire in the cockpit was blamed. In 1988, the roof ripped off an Aloha Airlines flight. 65 people hurt, one crew member killed. Metal fatigue and corrosion were blamed. Also 1988, Pan Am 103. That was terrorism, a bomb, killing all 259 on board. Then there's turbulence. This home video was from a United flight in Japan in 1997. Severe turbulence can be a, a very serious problem. There is a possibility of immediate structural damage. Also, something could be shaken loose. Investigators have a full plate when it comes to Air France 447. But whatever the cause, the result was tragic. For Good Morning America, John Berman, ABC News. And as always, we turn to our ABC News aviation consultant, former pilot John Nance. John, good to have you with us this morning, especially. Thank These you, orange spots we're hearing about that another pilot may have seen. Will this, if it is a debris field, tell you anything about what happened? More than likely, what it tells us is an in-flight breakup, Diane. If they were spread over a wide enough area, that tells us there was probably uh, an aircraft breaking up at very high altitude, otherwise at fairly low altitude. But the fact that anything might be burning, and we don't know that this was actually what was seen, but if that was, in fact, debris burning from this aircraft, then it tells us it broke up in flight. So if it's over a wide field, it broke up in flight. If it's a narrow field, it could have nosedived. Well, I don't think it, I think what it tells us if that was, again, debris from this airplane was that it did not go in intact. It had to have some sort of in-flight breakup for the fuel to ignite on the surface. Okay, let's turn to lightning and turbulence because, again, we hear 14 minutes after the pilots reported some turbulence. 14 minutes after that, we have these 10 automated signals that there's malfunction on the plane of various kinds. A big question yeah. I think every white knuckle flyer, every flyer has. Can turbulence break up a plane? In most circumstances, absolutely not. The, the aircraft can take anything the atmosphere can throw at it except for a tornado. I've got a, a model, it's the wrong airplane here, but basically what happens if you accidentally fly into severe turbulence is you're going to get pitched around and in the, some circumstances you might get over to an attitude and a, uh, a bank angle that you'd be trying to recover from and then hit another uh, rising column of air to the point that you could overstress the airplane, but that's about the only way. Well, it raises the question about these horse latitudes and Sam was briefing us on them as they called them. The ancient mariners called them that horrible convergence zone there with storms that reach up to 50,000 feet and this plane was flying at 35,000 feet. Why don't they fly around these storms? We do. As a matter of fact, the radar is on board the airplane or what we use for avoidance of any bad weather. There are circumstances, however, where you aren't seeing the rising column of air to the extent that you'd like to. The major uh, things that are going to show up on radar are much lower and you're at a higher altitude. And if they flew into one of those, it could be very violent uh, and very scary, although usually it doesn't affect the structure of the airplane. And again, we just saw how lightning, it's designed to go around the skin of the plane. Will lightning yeah. stop the engines of the plane? You told us yesterday there were backup systems for the communications, but will it stop the engines? Absolutely not. These engines can run with no electrical power on the airplane. They continue to gravity feed the fuel. I mean, they're, they're really designed as fail-safe with backups backing up the backups that are backing up the backups. So you still don't think lightning was the force here? 
you know, lightning, you can never say never, Diane. Uh, there are things that we learn in aviation all the time, but the likelihood is so infinitesimal as to be really not on the table.